Hi everybody and welcome to the first video from the Prepared Pathfinder. So my name's Tom, a bit of background on myself then. I served for 25 years in the Parachute Regiment, 12 years of that was in the Pathfinder platoon. So the motto of the Parachute Regiment is ready for anything. Uh, that is something I like to live my life by and that is the subject of this video today is being prepared basically. So I'm going to be going through my bug out bag. Um, what I'm going to be covering today is reasons why, so why pack a bug out bag. Considerations, so things to think about when packing it. Categories, so what type of kit should you be packing in your bag. And then I'll actually be going through my bag itself and going through the individual pieces of kit, why I carry them and what they're for. So <clears throat> I had a look through YouTube, I've looked at lots of uh, bug out bag videos and to be honest a lot of them are very unrealistic. There's a lot of people out there carrying like six or seven knives, hundreds of packs of wet wipes and about ten lights. None of that kit's going to keep you warm and dry. Um, and if you tried using that in this kind of environment um, in the winter in the UK, you're going to have a very bad time. So I just thought um, I'll have a look at what I'd pack and get it out there, maybe give some people some ideas. So why would you pack a bug out bag then? So doesn't matter what you call it, whether it's a bug out bag, whether it's a get home bag, whether it's an inch bag, whether it's a grab bag, you can't decide how long that's going to take you, how long you know, you're going to be out, depending on what's going on. The situation will depend that, uh, it will dictate that, sorry. Um, so everyone's saying, yeah, this is just my bug out bag for getting home, I know you need it to last for 12 hours, I think you're talking a lot of crap. I think you need to plan for the worst case scenario and then everything else is a bonus. Obviously there is a limit on that, you can only really pack for three or four days before it starts getting ridiculous, um, but what you need to look at is long term stuff. So what would cause you to actually want to grab your bag and bugger off then? So first thing is natural disasters, so we've seen lots of stuff all around the world and the well, last few years especially with climate change, things like wildfires, massive ones in the, in the United States, uh, Canada and Australia really bad obviously their climate's a lot hotter than ours um, but you know the world is changing and we might start experiencing some of the sort of more harsher weather conditions things like hurricanes earthquakes flooding which is very pertinent in this country and then another thing that's um, that can affect us quite badly in the UK is heavy snow and ice so it could be just the fact that you get stuck in your car there's been a big pile up on the motorway or the roads closed you can't get home from you've been away somewhere so putting a bag in, in, your, in your car just so that you can feed yourself, stay warm, things like that, it's, it's a really good idea, I think. Uh, then you've got man-made problems, okay, so things like civil unrest. Um, you know, recently in the States we've seen that and it's probably going to get worse looking at what's going on. Um, but we've had it in this country too with various uh, protests and stuff like that. Next thing's terrorist attacks. So we've seen those all around Europe, all around the world in fact, and in this country as well. So you may be coming home from work, it could be a terrorist attack, something, you know, hopefully not, but something as bad as 9-11. There's, you know, buildings falling down, there's dust everywhere, there's all sorts of stuff going on, people panicking. You may not have the option of driving home, so having something in your, in your car just to enable you to get to safety and make your life a bit easier for a couple of days, maybe, is not a bad idea. And then the worst case scenario was some sort of war. So, you know, the people living in Syria didn't know that they were going to be going through the war for all those years. And, you know, a bug up bag's not going to help you too much for that kind of long-term effect. But if you did have something packed and something was to happen, because um, lo and behold, who knows, something could happen in this country, some sort of war type action, um, then that would be the worst case scenario. So some considerations then. Um, I've kind of give myself seven considerations. First one's the situation. So what situation you're facing and the way we kind of divide it down in the military is is, is it permissive or non-permissive? So permissive being you want to be found, there's no sort of threat from other people, that sort of thing. Non-permissive means yes there is threat from other people so if you were in crowds that were hostile, stuff like that, or you was being hunted for whatever reason, that's a non-permissive environment, so then that affects how you're going to operate. Um, you're going to be trying to keep yourself a bit more covert, a bit more low-key. The next one's the weather and environment. So depending on what, what weather you're going to be facing, whether it's the winter in the UK or whether you're in the summer in Australia, it's going to be two very different 
weather and environment scenario so you pack your kit according to that. Um, the distance is the next one, so what distance do you expect to be covering? And again, you don't know what that's going to be in some scenarios, but if you know you work in a certain place and you need to get home to a certain place, you can possibly work out that bit. Um, but again, it could be an unknown. Next one's your skills and experience. So there's no point in packing kit you don't know how to use, or there's no point thinking you're John Rambo and you're going to be running around the woods, you know, cutting heads off, flipping animals and eating them, if you don't know how to do that sort of thing. So all these people with your survival gear and your kit, if you don't know how to use them, you haven't practiced using them, there's no point carrying it. And that's the same for medical kit as well. There's no point having all these Fandango bits of kit like tourniquets and stuff if you don't know how to use them. So make sure you, you know how to use your kit. Uh, next one's duration. Again, this could be an unknown, but you need to plan basically how long you're going to be out for with the kit you've got. Um, and the main one for me for that would just be rations really and water. But because there's plenty of water in the UK, streams and rivers and stuff, water's not so much of a problem, whereas food, you can only pack so much food. Uh, the next one will be threat. So what threat are you facing? And that threat might not just be people, it could actually be the weather. So if you're caught out, say in Scotland in the winter, and it's hammering down with snow and rain and it's freezing cold, that would be the threat to you. And the last consideration would be the size of your group or your family. So obviously you don't want to be just packing for yourself. You may be wanting to pack a bigger bag. So you've got kids in your group. If your missus is about it, if you've got a wife, then she might need to pack a bag too. But that's just something for you to consider. So the actual kit itself then, I've broken it down to six categories. The first one would be shelter. That includes the clothing. Next one would be water, and with water we're also talking about purifying water. Next one would be food, and with food I include cooking, so cooking uh, devices for that. Uh, next one is navigation, so things like maps, compass, GPS. Uh, then medical is the next one, speaks for itself. And last one would be signalling, so signalling devices so that if you was, say, on the side of a mountainside and you've broken your leg, um, you can signal someone. That includes phones, radios, um, actual physical signaling devices like torches, um, bright coloured bandanas, that sort of stuff. So as I said, uh, that's, that's all the kit there. Be familiar with the kit, know how to use it. Make sure if you've got stuff like medical kit in there, you know how to use it. Don't carry stuff you don't know how to use. Um, know how to navigate. That's a very important skill. A lot of people um, out there nowadays can't navigate, can't use a map and compass. So learn to do stuff like that because things like GPS can go down, they can stop working, batteries can run out. Uh, make sure you're super familiar with your kit, make sure you're, you know where it's packed, um, you can use it in your dark, in the dark, because you may not have the option of getting lights out, stuff like that. So train with your kit, work out what works, what doesn't work, and if there's any shortfalls and problems with your kit, because that'll only happen when you're out in the field in places like what I am right now. Right, so first thing I'm gonna talk about before we go into the bag itself then, is your dress, your clothing, and what's in your pockets. So hopefully what you want to be wearing is something that's not going to draw attention to yourself. So you don't want to be going too military, you don't want to be wearing anything that's too garish, too loud, bright, um, because if you do need to go sort of into like a grey man type thing in an urban scenario, you don't want to be standing out, okay? Um, so you, the clothing I'm wearing here, you can see it's kind of toned down, subdued colours, but it's not actually military. I'm not wearing anything that's camouflage, no multi cam or anything like that. Right then, so from head to toe, I'm just wearing a, a cap here. I think a cap's quite a good thing to be wearing in this kind of scenario. It does a couple of things. If it's hot, it'll keep the sun off your head and keep the sun out your eyes. If it's raining, it'll keep the, the rain off your face and stuff. And also, if you are needing to keep the sort of a little bit of a low profile, like I say, in an urban scenario, it does kind of, you can just tilt your head down and you can kind of hide your face slightly. And if, it's, if the sun is shining, It'll cast a shadow over your face, all right? So that's one good thing with this kind of hat. Um, the jacket I'm wearing there, I'm just wearing a windproof jacket. This isn't a waterproof one. Personally, I'd rather have a, a separate waterproof jacket. Um, I don't like to be moving around in a waterproof jacket all the time. It can get quite hot and sweaty. But this has got good weather protection from wind and stuff. Decent pockets as well. So in my pockets of my jacket then, what I've got is the normal stuff that you always carry when you leave your house. I've got my wallet on one side with my ID cards and stuff in, my bank cards. And on the other side, what I've got is my keys here. And on this set of keys, I've got a couple of 
quite handy items that I carry every single day. So the first thing there is a small torch. Second thing here is a little tiny mini Leatherman tool. So a couple of little blades and stuff on it. And the third thing I've got on here, this is called a CRKT. It's a, a rescue tool, tool thing. It's got a seat belt cutter on it there and a couple of small little like spanners and stuff like that. But if you were trapped in your car and the seat belt's tightened up around you and stuck and it has happened to a friend of mine, then this would be a lifesaver. It's in your pocket, you can just pull it out, it's always on you. You can cut that uh, uh, seat belt. And obviously you can help someone else as well. Um, also on this, something I didn't mention, this is called an Apex tie. This is off the old style military parachute. Uh, it's just an old memento. They stopped using these parachutes in 1994. But what it has got on it, this is actually sewn up paracord. So there's a, a small amount of paracord on there too. So then, what I would add into my pockets, I've got a small sort of what I call an admin line. All right, might look a bit funny there, but this is something we used to do in the early 90s. It's kind of died away a bit in the military now, but basically this is a, a cord that's secured by a mini carabiner to my pocket, and it's got a few absolutely essential items. So on the first thing then, this is a, a lighter and an X-Attack sleeve. So this is a waterproof sleeve for a lighter. And it's got a lid on it there, it keeps it 100% waterproof. Next thing is a small lock knife. So nothing Fandango, it's just a Gerber knife there. It's got a serrated edge on it as well for cutting rope and stuff. Next thing along then is a small torch. The next thing is a whistle. So a whistle is a great bit of kit for signalling for call of the help. Okay, I'll see I'm wearing a shemag here. If I wasn't wearing this, this would be in my bag. Shemag's a great bit of kit for lots of different things for survival and stuff. You can pre-filter water. You can use it as an emergency sling if you've broken your arm. You can use it as a towel. Um, there's loads of different things you can use it for other than just a scarf. Underneath here then, I'm wearing a lightweight fleece and a base layer. So the base layer's there to help regulate my heat and wick away any sweat if I'm moving fast and I'm not wearing anything really warm, okay? So if I was wearing a puffer jacket and I put my kit on and I start moving at speed, then I'm gonna generate a lot of heat and I start sweating. So what I'd like to do personally is wear something nice and lightweight and I keep my warm kit packed away for later on. Moving down my body then, I've got a pair of, these are 511 trousers um, and I'll go into more into what I carry in these for survival and escape items in another video. But in the actual pockets, left hand side then, I carry a map and this is a map of the local area it's a 150 scale map and obviously it's a bug out map okay so I got this made this is just basically that was just a silly picture I'd put on the front of zombies and stuff just a bit of a laugh but this is actually a custom made map of my area where I live Northamptonshire and what I did is I put where I live in the center of the map you can do it on Ordnance Survey and actually made my own purpose-made map so that if I needed to bugger off on my home, then I've got the maximum distance on that map. Because if I just bought the, the map that had it on my, my home area, back home, on a normal map, it's on the edge of a map. So I'd have to have two map sheets, if you see what I mean. Okay, on the other side of my trouser pockets then, what I've got is a very small organiser pouch. And all I've got in here is a waterproof notepad. And I've got various pens. I've got a Sharpie pen in there, pencil, uh, and a pen. And this thing here, this is a tactical pen. I don't know if anyone's probably seen these things before. It looks like a normal pen, but on the end it's got a hard point. That's not a pen point. And that can be used to break glass or, you know, in extreme circumstances, be used as a self-defense weapon. But because it's not obvious, then you could carry it out. People wouldn't, it wouldn't raise eyebrows sort of thing. But there is an actual pen on the other side as well. So that's what's in the right hand pocket. So moving down my body then, I've obviously got my phone in my pocket as well. This is a very important tool, as we all know, for doing lots of stuff nowadays. Um, so make sure that you've got this in a decent case so it's protected. Um, and if I was moving through, say, a rural environment, I'd have this in a waterproof case in my, in my bag with the rest of my electronics, and I'll go into that later. And again, just moving down my, my body again then, 
what I'm wearing is a pair of decent hiking boots. These are Aku boots, you can see they're a bit mucky because I've been out overnight already. Um, Gore-Tex, so they protect my feet from the wet uh, and well worn in. So there's no point in having a pair of boots that are great for use in the outdoors unless you've worn them in because on the day of the races when something happens, if you go and grab that pair of boots and they're not comfortable, not worn in, you're going to suffer and it's going to you know, have a detrimental effect on what you're doing. Okay then, so what I'm going to go through now is my actual kit and as you can see, you can probably notice here, it's not just one bag, alright? So what I've gone for is like a modul modular type uh, approach to this problem. Um, first thing I've got is my belt kit here. Now with the belt kit, you can see it's probably a bit mucky there. I've been out overnight and in this area, that I mean is quite uh, manky. Um, so with the belt kit then, I wouldn't wear this in an urban, urban environment. Uh, because it would draw attention to myself, uh, you won't be running around with pouches hanging off you, but this fits easily inside the actual main pack. So on the belt kit then, then what I've got is a water bottle, so that's a, a litre water bottle, and this is a metal Pathfinder water bottle, so it can be used for boiling water to disinfect it. Obviously you can see I've been using it for that. In conjunction with that then, what I've got is a Pathfinder mug, Again, great for use as a cooking vessel. As you can see, I've used it for that as well. And within there, what I have is a cleaning cloth. So it just tucks that inside there. And what that does, it also, secondary effect, it stops any rattle from the actual water bottle itself. So that just sits inside there. Last thing in this pouch then, is the lid for that cup. So you can put the lid on the cup and it'll help the, uh, the boiling time, will make the boiling time quicker. In this pouch here then, this is one of the old SAS escape pouches, I've had this for years. Um, and these pouches hang low on the belt, you can see they've got these low hanging belt loops, which is great for when you're wearing a pack so it doesn't interfere with a pack, it doesn't get in the way. So in here then, first thing I've got is a small medical kit. Now, I call this my secondary medical kit, I don't call this my boo-boo kit, because I'm not five years old and I'm not an American, alright? So in here, what I've got is all my health and hygiene and sort of maintenance of my, my body. And I'm not going to go into detail, but in general, what I've got on this side is tablets. So things like uh, painkillers, headache tablets, anti-diarrhea tablets, stuff like that. And then I've also got some tubes of cream like um, Savlon and Bite Relief, Sting uh, Relief Cream. On this side is all the sort of dressing type stuff, so mainly plasters and small wound pads, things like that. Next thing out of here then, is I've got a small monocular. This isn't anything super duper. This is something my mum gave me for Christmas many, many years ago, about 20 years ago. You can see it's got a bit of green tape around it and some mesh over the front. That's because I've used it whilst I was serving. And all this is for is just to observe, you know, at distance. So, if you was potentially having to cross a dangerous area, um, you know, there was there was like marauding crowds in the area or something like that, you wanted to make sure that there wasn't any sort of threat to you in a specific area, that you could check it out at a distance without putting yourself at risk. So that's why I've got it on the belt, so I can get to it quickly. Next thing in here then is a Leatherman signal. Um, Leatherman's a very, very important bit to kit to have when you're out in the wilderness. It's got all the tools on it that you need for lots of stuff, things like opening cans. It's got a decent blade on it too, again with a little serrated edge. It's even got a little mini knife sharpener on there and a mini ferro rod. But whatever kind of multi tool you have, I think it's a very, very important bit of kit to have when you're outdoors. Okay, next thing I've got in here, this is just a small tin that I use to make char cloth. Okay, so there's some of the char cloth I've got inside there. Um, char cloth is just a great bit of kit to use as tinder. You basically burn it inside this little tin here and then you can use it for making a fire uh, with your ferro rod or whatever later on, much more easier than using just a normal piece of material. Okay, next thing I've got in here then is a small survival blanket. We all know what these are for, good for, you know, if you come across a casualty and are going into shock, or if you're caught out in the woods without the rest of your kit, this will help save your life if it's very cold. Next thing, this is a DC4 um, sharpening stone for my knife. Okay, it's got the two sides on it, great bit of kit, pretty lightweight and very small. 
and the last thing I've got in this pouch then this is a water filter um, so this is a Sawyer mini water filter uh, can filter thousands of litres of water it's got a straw on it so you can use it directly out of a water source or what you can do is you have a, a bag that you fill up fill it with water and then squeeze it through the filter into your water container um, I have used this quite a bit when I've been outdoors again you need to practice using your kit and what I've done is I found that the bag that came with the filter was too small it was like a half litre or something like that so I changed it for a litre bag this is a different bag that has got the right type of attachments to fit on the, uh, the filter itself last thing on the belt kit then I've got my uh, my fixed knife fixed blade knife sorry so this is a Mora knife um, it's the bushcraft Mora um, quite a cheap bit of kit I can't remember how much it was it was only about 25 quid something like that but a great little bit of kit solid decent blade on it and obviously I keep that sharp using the DC4 so that's the belt kit, belt kit complete there Okay, moving on to the main bag itself then right then so what I've gone for this is a Carrymore SF Patrol 45 bag so 45 litres in size I've only used probably 30 to 35 litres of that capacity because what I've done is I've added on this other bag on the back this is a Kafaru E&E bag and this attaches via these clips on the side um, the reason why I've done that is to give another level of modularity so that's a big word isn't it modularity so if I was moving away from a campsite, say if I set up camp for the night somewhere and I wanted to go and scout out a recce or water source or whatever, just check something out, then I can take this off and take it with me and this has 100% got enough kit in it to keep me alive, okay, and we'll go through that. So this just detaches like so and then it's good to go. Right then, so this is the, the detachable bag, I'll call this my go bag. So within this it's got all the stuff I need to survive for at least 24 hours. So it zips right open, it's the clam, clamshell design. First thing I've got on the top then is a waterproof jacket. As I mentioned, I don't like to be wearing a waterproof jacket all the time. It's noisy, it gets hot in one of these things. Um, obviously if it's hammering down with rain you want it on. But I like to have a dedicated waterproof jacket for when it is raining. And most people in the UK will tell you that. Because um, if you haven't got one you're going to have a bad time in the UK. All right then, so that's a waterproof jacket. Then what I've got here, this is a basher. You can see it's wet there. Had a wet night last night, I stayed out last night and it absolutely hammered it down. Um, that's wet, doesn't matter because the rest of my kit's waterproof in here. You can see that's in a waterproof case. Um, also within this case for what I've got is the pegs to go with the basher. So I've got six MSR groundhog pegs there, nice and lightweight. And this thing folds down really small and it's pretty light apart from when it's wet like that it's a bit heavier now going through the bag then next thing i've got is this sole escape bivy okay again i used this last night and what this does it reflects some of the heat back into you um, but i wouldn't use this on its own okay i've seen people on facebook and you know youtube and stuff saying oh yeah i'm going to use my escape bivy on its own in the woods and stuff like that Unless it's a really warm day, I wouldn't be bothered doing that because you you need to have some level of warmth as well. Okay, so I use this with my sleeping bag. Okay, this is in here without a sleeping bag, but I have got other items in here to keep you warm, like a waterproof jacket, and I've got a fleece in here too. Um, but in an emergency situation, you would do, but I wouldn't plan on using this for overnight trips just on its own. You need to have something else in there with you. But good bit of kit, nice and lightweight and breathable. Okay, next thing I've got then is this little waterproof bag inside here. I'm not going to pull it all out, but I've got a small fleece jumper and a pair of socks. Okay, very important to keep your feet operating because without your feet you're useless. If you can't move over terrain, then you're knackered. So having a spare pair of socks is important because once you get wet feet, anyone that's experienced that and not, be, not been able to change their socks, you'll know it's not a particularly nice position to be in. Next thing I've got then, this is a small mess tin. This is made by ESS, sorry, ESEE. -E. Um, and in here, and I'm not going to go through this in detail, but in here I've got what I call my survival kit plus. Alright, so I've got this piece of paracord that I just yank out. And inside here, this is all my 
normal survival kit. So I've got water bags in the bottom, I've got cordage, I've got fishing kit. Um, there's actually half a packet of um, hexamine there, so four blocks of hexamine, fire starting kit and a bit of brew kit as well. And the reason why I've got that in a plastic bag isn't to keep it waterproof, it's so I can just pull it out of there with the cord and actually use the mess tin and then bonk it straight back in. And you can see there, what it's, what it's done is it's kind of formed to the shape of the tin and it fits in there really nicely. And I'm using the tape, I'll just take that back up and it sits in there nice. Obviously I'd take that tape off if I was going to cook with it as well. Okay, with that then, with the mess tin, I've got 24 hours rations here. So what I've got is two ball in the bags, beef jerky, there's like a little packet of tuna in the back there too, a chewy bar and two uh, coffee three in ones. So that's my brew kit there as well. So that's a decent amount of food for 24 hours, definitely, especially in an emergency. In conjunction with that then, what I've got at the bottom here, this is a small titanium cooker. This basically just folds out and I can use the hexi with this. Because it's titanium, it hardly weighs anything. Oops. Went the wrong way there. So that just folds out into that little sort of TARDIS shape like that. You put your hexi in and stuff. And obviously the beauty with something like this is you could just use small twigs, stuff like that as well, and just keep piling it on and keep the fire going. And that all folds down nice and small, goes into this pack here, and it weighs virtually nothing. And that just goes flat against the pack at the back there. At the top here then, what I've got is my small sort of bits and pieces pouch. I've got some cordage, 270 cord there, and um, that's obviously half the strength of paracord, but 270 pounds of breaking strain is more than enough for what you need for most tasks, you know, building and stuff like that, okay. Then I've got two spare Bic lighters in a separate waterproof case, so they're backups to my um, Bic that I've got in my pocket. Next thing I've got is this survival bandana. Um, I would never wear a bandana, ever but it's a great little signalling device because it's nice and bright and it's one of the only things I've got in my kit that is a bright colour but if you needed to attract someone's attention waving that thing around might work it's got lots of little nice survival hints and tips on it as well so if you're bored at night have a read of those the other thing I've got this for though is to protect my backup silver compass so I've got an actual backup compass there because the old silver compasses can break fairly easy because they're made of plastic so I've got that in there and that just helps protect it in that piece of bandana. Next thing I've got in there is Puri tabs, water purification tablets, super important. There's 30 tablets in there, each one of those can purify one litre of water, so up to 30 litres of water in there, very important for the kit. Spork, you can't really eat your rations without one of those, so essential. Bin bags, got a couple of bin bags there. You know, great bit of kit for help improvising shelters, making like a little ground sheet thing up, stuff like that. Last thing in the pouch then, probably the most important bit of kit, emergency Tabasco, okay? So yeah, if you haven't got your emergency Tabasco, you're in a bad place, aren't you? Last thing in the entire bag then, a little bit of morale that I keep in there. So this was a hip flask that was presented to me when I left the Pathfinders. And what I keep in here is some JD. JD, he's a good bloke. I like him with a dash of coke. Right? So I've put a bit of black tape over there. The reason being is the guy that presented that to me is who you'd probably know as Christian Craighead. So he was the guy that did the thing in uh, Nairobi a couple of years ago. Killed on a terrorist and stuff. Um, and that's his name on there. So he presented that to me as a mate of mine in the Pathfinders. Um, for obviously personal security reasons, I'll take that over. And that's the total contents of that section there. On the outside of the bag itself then, you can see that I've tidied up all the straps and stuff. This bag actually needs a lot of strap management as it goes. All the straps are quite long, which is good because it gives you the chance of adding stuff on and extending the bag and all that. But personally, I hate to have the straps hanging all over everywhere, and so I tidy them up so they don't catch on stuff as you're moving through the woods. On the outside then, on the right as I'm looking down at the patch, at the pack, 
what I've got is my primary first aid kit. So this is my trauma kit. Um, this is a 511 kit, as you can see. You can just pull that straight out the side panel there. Um, on the external part of this pouch then, I've got a tourniquet. And as I mentioned earlier, you need to know how to use these things if you're going to carry one. And also, you know, be trained in using them. Um, on the other side then, I've got a pair of the medical shears there. Um, a lot of people carry these and, you know, think they're going to big time it. But you need to know how to use these things as well. Um, they're basically for exposing injuries. So if you've got, say, a lower leg injury, a broken bone or something like that, cutting through the trousers quickly to be able to assess what's going on there and then be able to treat it. Open up the main part of the pack then. First thing I've got to hand is an Israeli bandage. So this is a military issue trauma bandage and it, it's got uh, compression on it as well. So it actually compresses against injury to help stop the bleeding. Also inside here what I've got is I've put together my own sort of trauma kit. This is just big wound pads strapping stuff like that you can see i've got some tape there i've also got two pairs of the vinyl gloves to prevent cross contamination when you're treating a casualty and there's some um, wipes in there as well medical wipes to help clean the injuries uh, last thing i've got in here then is a sharpie and that's used in conjunction with a tourniquet so if you are going to treat someone with a tourniquet you need to write on the casualty normally on the forehead and um, the time and date of when you apply that tourniquet. So when the doctor actually receives the casualty, he knows how long that um, tourniquet's been on. So that's the, the first bit there then. On the other side of the pack, all I've got is my main Tabasco. Okay, so that's my main Tabasco for my food, because basically if you've ever eaten army rations, you'll know without something like Tabasco, it kind of gets a bit much. And then just tucked in here then, I've got uh, my folding saw. You can see that's attached there via the strap so it can't fall out. So that just goes around there and I've twisted it as well just to take up the slack. And this here is obviously great for processing wood and stuff like that. It's called a Barco Laplander if anyone's heard of that. Just folds out, nice solid um, saw. Okay, at the top part of the pack here then what I've got is all the sort of other bits and pieces, the smaller bits and pieces that go inside the pack. First thing I'm going to come to is this thing here. So this is my um, protection equipment stuff, PPE, personal protection equipment. And what I would envisage using this for, if there was some sort of massive terrorist attack, something like that, and there's lots of dust in the air, maybe dangerous particles, things like that, then You've, firstly, I've got two masks. This is the type with a, a respirator type fitting on it. It's got the old filter on it. This is a normal type one. And then what I've got here is a, it's a set of goggles, okay? This is a set of sky, skydiving goggles that I use for when I'm skydiving. Um, so what this does, it gives a complete seal around your eyes. So when you're using them, you've got nothing going into your eyes, okay? But what these do have on this one, they have like a little thing here that moves left to right and it can provide some ventilation as well so if you are getting hot you can put those across and it gives a bit of ventilation as you move around in case they steam it up and then the last thing in this little pouch then is some ear defenders so just a little yellow ear defender's got two sets of those in there just in case there is like a hell of a lot of noise going down um, or even if you're stuck, say you're stuck inside a facility of some sort with a load of other people and everyone's snoring their heads off. If you've, been, uh, if you've ever spent much time in the military in big barrack rooms, you'll know how much of a drama that can be. Um, next thing in here then is a head torch. So that's my primary light. Um, this has got a red light function on it as well for more sort of like tactical applications. So it's not quite as obvious when you're cutting around the woods. I think that a head torch is absolutely essential. It gives you the option to be able to do stuff at night with your hands free. Okay, so a normal torch you need to hold. This thing, you could be treating a casualty, moving a casualty, you know, fixing something, whatever it needs to be doing with your hands free. So head torch is essential. Next thing then, this is called survivor cord. So it's paracord, but within there, you've also got these little strands, okay? So you've got a fishing line strand, 
a waxed jute strand, so that's good for fire lighting. It kind of spread the fibres out and helps um, start fires. And then you've also got a wire strand in there too, that's good for making snares and stuff. So this has got a higher breaking strain than Paracord. I think it's like 750 pounds, something like that. And there's 50 feet of there. Okay, next thing I've got in here then, this is my sort of waterproof pouch. So just stuff I need to keep 100% waterproof and to hand. So I've got six AAA batteries, um, and the only kit I use that's battery powered uses AAA batteries. Uh, two packets of tissues for obvious reasons. And then in the back here, this is um, like patch kit for your um, sleeping pad. So I've got a sleeping pad in here. If it was to you know, get cork, spring a leak, and get punctured, then I use that to fix it. Next thing in here is Gorilla Tape, so black nasty tape. Everyone knows with paracord and tape you can pretty much fix anything. Great for just you know repairs and stuff in the field. Um, next thing I've got in here then, this is my electrical pouch. So waterproof pouch in here. I've got a phone charger with my relevant leads. I've got, I'm actually carrying a plug because you may get to a position where you can actually plug your phone in somewhere in a building or something. And then also what I've got in here, this is a signal blocker pouch with a spare phone in it. So this is an active phone. As you can see, it's a bit of a flipping retro Webster's phone. Um, but what I wanted is just something that was nice and basic, that the battery power was gonna last for, you know, for ages. This lasts for at least a week, as opposed to my normal phone that lasts less than 24 hours. And I basically just charge this up every couple of weeks, stick it in here, and it's ready to go. And it is activated, it's good to go. Clear plastic bag, now obviously you can use this for lots of things like collecting water and stuff but what I actually use this for when I'm in the field is just putting my rubbish in. So empty ration packs, stuff like that, just put my rubbish in because you know even in a disaster I'm going to be dropping rubbish everywhere. But going seriously, if you were potentially in a non-permissive environment, if you were to leave rubbish, people could find you, could track you by, you know, by finding your gash and stuff that you're leaving everywhere. Next thing's a mosquito net, head net, so not really a problem this time of year in the UK, you're not going to get them, but I've learned the hard way, if you don't carry these at all times, then it will eventually bite you in the ass. So I always carry one of these, no matter what weather, um, because midges are horrendous, um, places like Scotland and stuff like that in the summer, and it weighs virtually nothing, doesn't take up any space. The other thing you can use this for is for, you know, it sounds a bit water ish but a bit of concealment. But if you did need to hide or keep yourself a little bit more covert, you could stick this over your face and it tones down the colour of your face. Next thing in here then is multivitamins. And this is just an addition to your rations. So if you were out for a fairly long time, you could just pop one of these a day and it helps you know your, your vitamin intake instead of just the stuff you've got in your rations. And some windproof matches. Mega bit of kit, obviously. In bad conditions these will always light and they'll always, always burn. Now last thing I've got in here then, this is a little card that I made up and it's a kit checklist card. Okay and what I've got on there is all the dates for the run out dates for stuff like batteries, um, medicines, you know the, your tablets and stuff like that and um, what I've also done at the bottom I've put a little section of kit to pack so if I've taken anything out of this or if like for example, at the moment, when I'm practicing, I'm out in the field for a couple of days and I've used rations, I'll write in at the bottom so that when I get home, yeah, okay, I need to replen that stuff. On the back of it, I've got a personal information card, okay, so that's my details there. If I was found injured or dead, um, my next of kin's details is on there, my address, my phone number, email address, all that stuff. Obviously, I'll put some black tape over that so that all you stalkers out there haven't got my information, all right? So, that's everything on the external part of the pack. Going into the main part of the pack itself then. Right, the first thing I've got on the top of the pack then, this is just like my um, additional clothing items. So in here, if I wasn't wearing this shemag, my shemag would be in here. Then I've got a pair of gloves. So these are primarily for protection. They've actually got Kevlar built into these gloves on the palm and stuff to 
give you protection. So if you did need to climb over walls and stuff that had maybe had a jagged glass on and that, obviously you'd want to get as much of it off, off as you could um, before you used them. Uh, also for cutting, so chopping wood and stuff like that, you need to be wearing gloves while you're doing stuff like that. Obviously they can give you a level of protection from the cold and stuff, but they're primarily for protection. Next thing I've got in there then is a woolly hat. So really, really important bit of kit to have in this country at least. Woolly hat to keep you nice and warm on those cold nights. Okay, going back into the bag. Next thing I've got at the top is my rations, okay? The reason why it's at the top is because that's a fairly weighty item. So that's a good sort of three or four pound there block. And that's two days worth of rations, okay? So I've got boiling the bags. I've got noodles. I've got... Um, porridge oats and a brew kit and some snap bars okay so two days there plus a day in the the uh, grab bag and that, that brings up three days worth of rations with the rations then what I've got is my primary sort of cook set and I do have the hexi in my survival kit but this is the one I'd rather cook on given the, the option it's just a gas bottle and an MSR uh, pocket rocket super little bit of kit um, quiet doesn't give off any smell that sort of stuff so it's quite sort of covert if you were in that situation where you needed to hide away okay next thing i've got in here then this is my spare clothing and believe it or not i have got a fair bit of kit in here um i've got my warm jacket that's a, a down jacket there then i've got a spare t-shirt and again, this is like a technical t-shirt. It's the sort of thing you'd wear in the gym. So if you were moving around, the sweat would be whipped away. Then I've got this thing here. This is a Helicon wind shirt. I think they're called, yeah, wind, wind shirt. And what it is, it's just basically a camouflage layer. So it's a wind stopper layer, very lightweight. Not really for too much to do with thermal properties, but it is another layer. But what I would personally use this for is if you were needed to, you know, sneak around for some reason and need to be a bit, bit less, you know, a bit less obvious, then you could put this straight over the top of your kit and you've got an instant camouflage layer and it weighs virtually nothing. Now. Last thing here then is a pair of socks and some foot powder. So with the grab bag I've got two pairs of socks and some foot powder. And that's all together in a waterproof um, dry bag. Next thing, this is my hygiene kit. As you can see, it's very small. And all I've got in here, toothbrush, toothpaste. And this toothpaste is non-scented, which is really difficult to find. I had to find this on eBay. Um, the reason why I got this is so that, again, if you were needed to cut around without being found, if you had some sort of um, non-permissive threat, um, Toothpaste is really, I mean, it stinks, doesn't it? You know, the smell of toothpaste goes for miles. So what I've got this for is to, again, a little bit less of a signature when you're out in the woods so people can't find you, if that's a problem. Um, dental floss, really important to keep your teeth in good nick. I've heard people come out with stupid comments on YouTube about why they've got the toothbrush in there. It's for morale. Well, I don't clean my teeth for morale. I clean my teeth to keep the teeth in good nick. Um, really important to do that in the field a case if, if you didn't clean your teeth for a, a week or so you'd know about it and you're going to start getting problems with your teeth I do carry one packet of wet wipes in here and that is just for you know lastminute.com you can see they're totally unopened I've been out in the field loads of times never used them but you know if one day I actually wanted some morale I'd use those but I do think it's a bit silly that I see a lot of these videos with people pulling out hundreds of packets of wet wipes. It's not about keeping clean, it's about keeping alive, innit? Next thing in here then is my roll mat. So this is a sleeping pad, inflatable sleeping pad. And I prefer the self-inflating type to the sort of lilo types. The lilo ones that you kind of feel like you're bouncing around on them. They're nice and small, but these ones here, they're more robust um, and they just, I find them more comfortable to be fair and if you've got the space like I have here I'd rather carry one of those right then final item last thing sleeping bag so this is in a waterproof bag this bag is actually 100% waterproof you see um, uh, ex exchange light says on the bottom there but it's an event uh, waterproof bag 
and this compresses it down. Inside here I've got a RAB Ignition 2 which is rated down to 5 degrees um, in normal conditions. I think it's got an extreme of zero, something like that. Um, but in conjunction with the, uh, the bivvy bag, which is down there, so I'm telling you there, with the bivvy bag then you can increase the sort of temperature rating for that quite a bit. Um, but quite a nice, nice sleep and that sort of thing. So that's the kit then. That's everything. This is what I carry for at least three days, if not longer. The only things that I'd need to extend my time in the field would be more food, really. Water, yeah, you'd need more water than one litre, but there's so much water in the UK, there's loads of streams and stuff out there. As long as you make sure that it's a clean source um, and filter it, put your purif purification tablets for it, that sort of stuff, then you'll have plenty of water. Um, actually, one thing I forgot is talking of water I've actually got a separate bladder so I carry this empty in the back of the pack so I've got the the option of extending for another three litres of water in the pack itself that's it right then so what I've covered today is my take on a bug out bag for use in the winter in the UK that whole setup came to £37, that's including the belt kit and it's including all food and water within the kit. So if I was going to be packing it for the summertime or for using a different environment, then obviously it'd be set up slightly differently, I'd have different items in there. So you, you pack your kit for whatever suits you in your environment, your requirements, that sort of stuff. But just remember, whatever you put in there, you need to know how to use it. There's no point putting gadgets in there you're not familiar with, you don't know how to use. Um, and make sure it's practical. There's no point just setting it up to look good. If you need to use this kit, it's gonna be serious stuff. So make sure you've set it up properly and you know how to use all that kit. So if you've got any questions or comments, whack it in the questions below, or the comments below, and I'll, um, you know, I'll do my best to answer them. And don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Hopefully you've got something from this video and we'll be seeing you again soon. Cheers.